Good afternoon. It's June 11, 2010. I'm Jill Eckhart with your Ernerberry Market Report, sponsored by the 2010 Innovative Beef Symposium, August 25th through 26th in Denver, Colorado. The night we've all been waiting for is finally here. Ernerberry's Night at the Races kicks off this evening with a cocktail hour at 6 p.m. at Yonkers Raceway in Yonkers, New York. If you don't already have your tickets, you can still enjoy the festivities. Come and sign up at the registration desk this evening. Today, Food Market.com is reporting that after 23 years, the National Pork Board said that it plans to replace pork's famous advertising slogan, the other white meat, with something officials hope will give sales a lift. You can find out more on this story and other news from the center of the plate at foodmarket.com. Now, let's set the tone. In the egg market, retail demand continues to be poor. Supplies of extra large and large are long, with surplus shells offered to the breaking channel. The market is weak. Demand throughout the European Union is somewhat soft, and supplies are modestly increasing. Eggs for industry have declined modestly, while liquids retain a stable economic posture. Ranges throughout the value-added segment are mostly consistent. Looking at poultry in the chicken market, it would seem that the most of heavy discounting on breast meat has receded. Movement was termed typical for a Friday, allowing most plants to be cleared out. Whole birds are about steady to steady. Heavier sizes may be a bit long, while smaller sizes are well supported. Dark meat is finding a decent draw geared towards retail commitments. Wings are no better than about steady. Talking turkey, as the week draws to a close, the lack of the items being pursued is keeping trade levels to a minimum. A slightly higher range of values have been paid for fresh destrapped tenders and fresh tom breast meat. Breast trim, scapula and wing meat supplies are short of needs for the industry. Now with a seafood market update, here's John Sackton from SeafoodNews.com. Uh, good morning, it's uh, Friday, June 11th. Um, this is John Sackton. I'm in St. Andrews, New Brunswick uh, at an uh, industry meeting in connection with the St. Andrews Seafood Festival. Uh, this part of the uh, Bay of Fundy is the heart of uh, the salmon farming industry in Atlantic Canada. Uh, one of the things that I've picked up in the last couple of days is there seems to be a turn uh, occurring in the salmon market. Uh, first of all, sales are really slow. Uh, secondly, uh, there's a, a sense that more production for farmed salmon is going to be coming on uh, in the next uh, couple of months, uh, both in uh, the West Coast and in, in Norway as well, and that this is going to impact uh, the supplies. And finally, because of the currency situations in Europe, uh, some uh, American uh, buyers of farm salmon have begun getting calls uh, from people in Europe trying to sell them fish whom they haven't heard from for months. Uh, all of this means that a little bit more salmon is uh, coming onto the market at a time when uh, sales uh, are quite slow and as a result uh, we think the market might uh, turn a little bit. Thanks John. Moving over to red meats, while there are some discounts noted for quick ship offerings of boxed beef, the amount of price reductions are a bit less than what has appeared throughout the week. The discounts for the most part are seen for loin meat and peeled knuckles. Varied opinions are seen with the inside round as some sellers have posted a slight increase in price while others are still publishing a discount for immediate ship opportunity. Switching gears with some fun fast food facts, here's market reporter Andrew Knox. Thanks Jill. Today we're going to take a look at the cost of some of the fast food sector's inputs. The chart here shows the market values of some common ingredients used in fast food sandwiches. Hamburgers are made out of a blend of lean beef, the dark and light blue lines on this chart, and fatter trimmings, the green line. As you can see, leanless boneless beef values are down from the tops that were posted several weeks ago, but are still trading higher than they were at this time last year. In a classic what-goes-up-must-come-down market scenario, the decline in fatter trimmings has been the most significant, but they also saw the highest peaks this year in May. The chicken item shown on this chart is commonly used in fast food chicken sandwiches. It has not been as volatile as the other items shown, and like them, it is currently trading higher than a year ago. Chicken advances are perhaps the most sustainable of any item on this chart. We've also been hearing about the success of some fast food rib sandwiches lately. So just for fun, we're charting that item here as well, as represented by the orange line. It seems to be trending more like the beef items, hitting its high in April and May before trending lower. However, prices still remain higher than year-ago levels. With that, I'll send it back to you, Jill. 
Thanks, Andrew. Wrapping things up with a look at pork. Cash hog prices are expected to level off today and hold steady due to interest in hogs for next week's schedules. Both direct market hogs and terminal hogs are called steady. Today, supplies of hams are thin and industry sources expect that prices could rise should trade develop. With retail pork demand lagging and trading activity typically slow paced on Fridays to begin with, many anticipate a quiet day out of the fresh pork markets. In general, the complex is oversupplied and rated weak, and any sales that are reported today are expected to be barely steady to lower. Don't forget to check out Ernerberry's Insider's Red Meat Report in, this, in its entirety this afternoon on Comtel. That's your Ernerberry Mid-Morning Tone brought to you by the 2010 Innovative Beef Symposium. Be there to be the first to hear about new value-added cuts, how to fabricate merchandise and menu them. Space is limited. Head to beefinnovationsgroup.com to register.